Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Open That Book Rich. If you have never seen one of these videos, you're in for a treat, sort of. This used to be an original concept on YouTube until I stopped doing them and uh, other people amplified it. <laughs> anyway, the point is we're going to look at Otomo today. Otomo Katsuhiro or Katsuhiro Otomo, however you like to say it. And um, what was I going to say? I had something. Oh, okay. So how this came about is I have a very large book collection. And unfortunately, because I'm a very busy artist, uh, a lot of times I don't get a look at uh, books that I own. In fact, many times I buy them and don't even look at them hardly at all, if at all. Uh, and it's a shame, but it's just my schedule. You know, I have good intentions when I buy it. Um, but unfortunately, this is like a fold out that comes in it. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and it's actually got a really, really cool photo of him working at his desk. But yeah, you know, I, it's just one of those things where when the books eventually get delivered, a lot of times if I'm on a deadline or something like that, I go, uh, you know, I'll look at it tonight after I'm done working. And then, you know, you work a 10 hour day and you're kind of burnt and don't feel like looking at it. And, uh, you know, it gets if once it's on the bookshelf, there's a high likelihood it's just not going to get looked at. I don't have a lot of spare time, to be honest. In fact, I have none. People that know me in real life, not YouTube life, are always, like, pretty staggered by how busy I am. <laughs> I have friends that I grew up with that are literally like, we never see you. And I'm like, yep, that's right, because I'm always working. <clears throat> but that's the way it goes if you're going to be an artist. So anyway... I'm really excited to look at this. I've literally not looked at this book in years. Um, probably the last time I looked at it was when I shot a YouTube video of... I. So this is my recollection, because only one is up on my YouTube channel. I swear to God I shot Kaba 1 and Kaba 2. I don't know where the second video went. I don't know if it. I just never uploaded it, or if I didn't like it, and so I didn't upload it. But it's just not there. Uh, so I figured we'll look at... Um, Kaba one today, and then in a couple weeks we'll do Kaba two. I won't forget, you know, to come back to it, and um, it'll be fun. And uh, I'm gonna kind of stick with the open that book um, uh, approach to videos for the time being, as opposed to the um, the digital files. I have a huge book collection, and it's it's we might as well just look at the books. Um, there'll be shorter videos. They can only really be 30 minutes without me editing them. I know I've talked about this before and people give me recommendations, but I think 30 minutes is plenty. It gives you a taste of the book and, um, an opportunity to decide if it would be something that you want to seek out. Some of these books are really expensive. I didn't buy them when they were expensive or, you know what I mean? Like they just, they go out of print and then they're really, really hard to get. I have two books that are literally like, like you literally just can't find them. <laughs> I, I think the one's probably worth like a thousand bucks. It's Vanya. I don't know if people know who Vanya is, but he's, um, I think, I don't really know where he's from, but he kind of fell off the face of the earth, but he's a pen and ink artist. It's really, really good. That book is very rare. I have an Ashley Wood book that I literally have not seen online. It's a hardcover big book. Um, that just doesn't exist. There was one sale a while ago. So I don't know what the deal is with that book either, but it's just, you can't find it. So a lot of times you got to snap these things up right when they come out. And uh, this, I, I had never even heard of this. I mean, I live in California. So at, at some point this came on my radar and, and um, I just went and kind of sought it out. So Tomo works in a lot of different mediums. He's an incredible artist just across the board. He has great ideas. He has great execution. Uh, he has a huge body of work. He's legendary for, for really, really good reasons. He's one of the, the greats. Very, very inspiring work. Very influential work. You know, he goes down is is just phenomenal. That's really, really cool. Yeah, I was gonna say this looks like Domu. <clears throat> so I always say this, but Otomo is definitely in my top five favorite artists. The show, you know, I can all hear this is my short list. It's Travis. Frank Miller and Mignola and Otomo 
And I don't really know who the fifth one is. Maybe Mark Silvestri. <laughs> like, I consider all those comic book artists. It's not artist artists. Um, but but the list is huge. It's hundreds of artists. Probably a thousand. But I think those are my top five. I never really get bored of, like, looking at their work. It's pretty crazy. Let's see. My one concern with shooting the open the book videos is just the amount of uh, shine on the pages. Sometimes they're very glossy paper in these books, and those are just, they're nearly impossible to shoot for me. I don't have that good of a lighting rig that I can set up, like professional lighting to shoot like a super shiny papered book. This is so great. I'm trying to think. So this is 1981, it says. I don't know what year Otomo came out. Uh, uh, I mean, not Otomo, Akira, sorry. Um, uh, But if this is from 1981, and this is, well, this is Fireball. What is the credit on that? Cover illustration for the novel. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. 19. It's definitely got an Otomo. I mean, god damn, why do I keep seeing Otomo? Akira vibe. This is cool. Man, I haven't seen this book in a long time. I mean, this is an incredible painting. So this is from 1981, too. This is acrylic. <laughs> he crushed it. A great piece. Let's see if I can kind of show the whole thing. Isn't that cool? Man, what a fantastic layout. I love stuff like this where there's like a scene and you in the in depth, you know, there's like all these different layers of detail where you can look across the bridge and like even further back. Man, he's got all kinds of stuff going on. There's little animals in the trees, little hut back here. That's really cool. Look, it's the Little Red Riding Hood and the, the wolf. This is nice. Telecaster. <laughs> so this says that this is... Post illustration of the first video by the rock band Metro Farce, Orange Video House, 1981. Not heard of them. I don't, I don't think in 1981 there was even CDs. I think they didn't come out for like a year or so later. Maybe three years? 84? Maybe 80. No, it wouldn't have been 82. It's cool. <clears throat> Whenever I see bodies of work like this, it, it's you realize how much you can actually produce. I find it very inspiring. Uh, the, the quantity and the variety of work that someone like this produces um, really, really shows you that don't be lazy. You know what I mean? There's, there's just no good excuse if you seriously want to be an artist that you aren't trying to create a, your own body of work myself included i'm guilty as charged so not anymore though and i did do six pages this week too so i'm two weeks in a row i've been able to pencil and ink six pages which is pretty impressive i'm on fire right now and the stuff i'm proud of this issue too it's 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 like i can stand behind this one as it's actually it's starting to like look okay to me which is huge let's see what this is all about because i hate everything that i draw if it's not great <laughs> so the fact that this stuff looks okay is a good sign <laughs> i'm like oh all right i can live with this i wouldn't be embarrassed to show this to someone it's still not great but that's cool i still have this weird is i don't know that might be the world trade center i'm not sure um I, it's funny is is I've gotten further into comics. I definitely f have this weird uh, desire to do something with the West, like the old West. I don't know if I would do a traditional Western, but there's something 
there's something there for me. I, I think the landscapes, the sparseness of things, the primitive sort of technology, it all is very interesting to me. And I think that um, there's a story there for me. I really enjoy um, history. So um, sometimes when I work, I'll stick on like different documentaries about history and stuff like that. Oh, this is cool. I mean, already I'm totally blown away by just the quantity of work that we've seen. And we're not even like a tenth of the way through this book. And and there's more, plus the Tomo and Domu and <laughs> like, books he did. This dude did so much kick-ass art. He's probably drawing right now as we're shooting this video. It's like some, some fool is doing a video about my art when he could be drawing too. Really, really nice detail. But these these do actually get me um, excited about art and drawing. I mean, it's it, it it was the trick that I used on myself, the open that book concept, and even just doing these videos was really the only way that I was going to look at art, uh, 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 you know, like on any kind of regular basis. Because left to my own devices, I just never have the time to do it. There was a point where I was getting up early. I would wake up at like 5.30 and look at art for like 90 minutes before I had to actually kind of get up, get up. But I haven't done that in a while. But maybe like six or seven months ago I was doing it. I'm getting really into Captain Harlock right now, if you guys know that, um, that book and that art. That's really good. See, I've never even had my big robot phase. I would do sort of um, mech, mech girls, sort of, I don't know, it's like kind of Soriyama meets Geiger, Giger. Um, and uh, that's about as close as I ever got to doing like a lot of robot stuff. I did a review yesterday and had to, I was helping someone with their robot parts. So it's the lessons and reviews kick me in the ass to get, get, proficient at these things it's been pretty amazing as i said in last video this is nice i like the colors on this a lot it's that like kind of well this is 1983 but it's a very 70s like color palette corbin kind of thing oh here we go so akira so 1984 now i don't know uh so it says has been serialized in Young Magazine twice a month since issue 24 in 1982. So 1982 is when Atom um, Akira, God, I don't know why I keep playing Atomo, um, uh, popped up. That's really, really cool. 1982. Hey, we're coming up on the 40th anniversary. That's pretty neat. Hmm. Fun. It would be interesting to see. I bet issue 24 of, of Young Magazine is like so collectible. It's like ground zero for Akira. That's pretty badass. It's kind of neat. This is so great. I'm trying to remember. I, I want to say that Richard Bennett got me into... Akira and Natomo. Um, he had the laser disc of Akira, I think, and we hung out at his house one night with a few people and we watched it. And I was just, you know, I'm meeting all these new people and really good artists, and I'm just I'm I'm super green. I mean, even though I had just become a professional, I mean I really had only been following comics for probably a year and a half. Uh, so everything was new for me. I mean, everything was a new experience and, and, you know, it was just learning. And he had Ghost in the Shell. He had Akira. He had memories. And I was just like, oh, man. I'm not sure. Cowboy Bebop came along pretty close after that. But it was it was exciting, you know. 
I mean, you don't like. I mean, even if you're collecting American comics, I mean, especially at that time, you weren't really seeing stuff like this. There wasn't a lot of people. I mean, Jeff Darrow probably would be the closest to someone who was this bananas. I'm sure there's there's others, but you know what I'm saying. It wasn't as common. I did have hard boiled before I got to um, Wildstorm. I remember seeing those magazines and kind of going like, "Oh my god." I feel like I had seen that as a teenager, possibly. Like, I had one friend that was into, like, arty farty comics. And I think I might have gotten a whiff of Jeff Darrow from him. Maybe. Man, that's great. That's so cool. What a shot. I actually have to draw a scene like this, I think, in this book. The issue I'm working on. It's not a city scene, but it's inside of a, a hangar. I have it laid out though. The layout layout is similar. It's a shot from inside looking out. People standing around chitter chattering. <laughs> Look at this dude. He's got a fancy desk. That's a nice chair. It looks it looks pretty comfortable. Look at this. I actually really like the color on that. That flat green. It looks like it's a little lighter on this side, and it gets a little of the tiniest bit darker, but I would assume, this is 1987, this is probably hand-colored with, like, dyes. It may even been, well, this is for a Nissan Motor Company, so I was going to say, it's it's probably colored by Atomo or one of his assistants, not, um, Olaf. These are illustrations. It's a new chapter. It's pretty nice. This almost feels like cell animation. It's funny. Okay, so let's skip this. I'm, I'm not as interested in seeing sort of just like little... They're, they're nice, but... Comics. So we'll see what's at the end of this. Yeah, this, this is all kind of... Get us some feel of what it's like. Right, so let's see what we got here. Ooh. Holy shit. This guy is on fire. Okay, comics. And again, we're only probably a third of the way into the book right now. So, this is a little MC Escher kind of vibe. It's impressive how much work he's done, right? Uh, and and the level of detail that this stuff has. It's really, really inspirational and impressive. Art is a great thing. If you're able to do art for a living, you should consider yourself very, very fortunate. And if you have that as a dream, then work hard for it. Because it's you're going to be in a very small percentile of people who can actually exist off of their drawings. It's no joke. I consider it in a way a, a, a responsibility, like a good one though, but it's like sometimes I lose sight of that, but I have to remind myself that it's like, look, you need to bring it. It's, <laughs> it's hard to explain. That's cool. <clears throat> Usually at some point in my videos, I always go, oh man, it would be cool to see this person draw Akira. But this is the guy that draws Akira. <laughs> but I always think that. Like, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll see a piece and I'll go, ooh, you know, it would be interesting to see so-and-so do like an Akira short story. That would be actually really cool for a 40th anniversary is a book of artists doing um, it's a pretty funny little drawing, um, short stories of, of uh, Akira. Let me know if they've ever done anything like that. I'd be curious. Nice gun. I'm getting a tiny bit better at drawing guns. I still don't know the parts, though. <clears throat> but 
I'm having to draw them more often, so it's like you start to come up with opinions on them as, as you're forced to do it again and again. This is nice. This is a really good little drawing. Actually, it's kind of got a, like a little bit of a Jack Davis vibe. <laughs> That's awesome. Man, look at the rendering in here. It's so cool. Fancy boots, you can't go wrong with fancy boots. Hey, that's, uh, what's his face? Wild Bill, or is it? Wild Bill Cody? Oh, man, I have this comic. This is from Delmo. It looks like a Vegas hotel to me. So hopefully you guys are excited that we're back on Open That Book. I, I really do have an insane book collection, although I haven't been purchasing books for a while, but but my deep cuts are pretty ridiculous. I've been given some books over the last like five or ten years by my good friend Eddie Choi. He occasionally will send me a book, and I really appreciate it. So we're going to focus on some of the books that Eddie has sent me. because He goes to a lot of like art shows and stuff like that, and... and uh, Someday I'm going to hook Eddie up. I, in the back of my mind, my reward for him has always been that, that when I get good at drawing, where I feel I'm good, is I wanted to do a nice piece for him. <laughs> it just sounds funny. It's like, it, oh, it's such a famous uh, photo. But yeah, it's funny how I think that. I'm like, someday I'll be good enough where I can actually do art as gifts. But right, right now, it would be... I can't stand behind them as gifts. It's just survival at this point. That's cool. I really like the color on this one, actually. Let's see what we got going on here. It's super tiny. It's funny. The camera actually... Th there is a benefit to this, which is that we can zoom in so tight on this stuff um, at a pretty high resolution. Man, look at this. This is great. It's funny because uh, I was so excited for um, Death Stranding based on the trailers and stuff like that. And the game just really isn't what I was hoping that it would be. But the tanks going across the bridge, if you've seen the trailer, the meat tanks. <laughs> I was like, this game is going to be the shit. You know, it's it's interesting. I I don't know for a fact, but I'm sure all of this had like some sort of small impact on Blaster Kid. But stuff like this, I'm sure, kind of planted the seeds early on for like an apocalyptic um, adventure story. You know, with like just crazy stuff, Ghost in the Shell. I think it all it all I think sort of got into my DNA at a very like you know like a crucial time. It's like when you're when you're growing and the, the you kind of put the ideas you don't even know i mean that's the thing is you start to source the stuff out it just comes out of you and you're like man i don't even really know where i got this and then you see something like this and you go mm, you know what i bet i bet some of this was the the fuel the kindling for for those those ideas even though it might have happened several years later this is really beautiful Mm -mm. Well, this is working out good. I'm I'm really stoked that the paper isn't super slick, because that's it's such a deal breaker on these books. It's so frustrating trying to shoot them. This is really really nice. The panorama kind of pull out. You can see. Hmm, this is fun. Oh, I like this. That's cool. God, this guy is drawing a lot of shit. You're gonna die when you see this piece that's coming up in just a second. It's we're two away from it. Well, this is a beautiful little drawing. Look at this. Man, what a great thing. What but look at well, this is nice. We'll go with this little kind of drawing. Look at this. Isn't that nuts? 
So this is the title page for Super Fiction Special 1981, Hansel and Gretel. I say that this is pretty badass. <laughs> there's Hansel and there's Gretel. Look at the little Gretel, Hansel. I don't, I don't really know the story. I'm assuming they, kind of like Jack and Jill, they go up the tree hill. Oh, look at this. The Watermelon Messiah. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's actually, he did a great job on the stripes. <laughs> They're pretty cool looking. Like the rock. God, man. I'm so glad I'm finally penciling. Oh, my God. I can't even explain. Inking was a fun ride, but man, being able to be creative and actually express yourself through drawings is so much better. You can't be king of the world if you're slave to the grind. Sebastian Bach, Skid Row, no. Uh, but it, it does it does feel that way sometimes at times. I was like a caged lion. I had to get out of the cage. Aaron Weisenfeld did some great destroyed buildings in Team 7. In fact, I bought an interior page just because of how good he drew um, some buildings that had been, like, bombed or something like that. This is pretty cool. Oh, this is the Watermelon Messiah stuff. <laughs> it's got a little bit of, like, a Juan Jimenez feel just at times. It's just a touch. The color palette kind of reminds me of it. Let me get this real quick. Oh my gosh. Look at this. The watermelon like fell to earth and then broke apart. The people look like ants. Okay, we got like three minutes. So commercials. Let's see what this is. Oh my gosh, look at this. The future city for canon drawn in pen and ink. If you've ever seen the Cyber Six books by, um, oh shoot, I'm gonna, or Carlos Meglia, Carlos Meglia did a really clever thing, which was he drew a big city scene, and they would kind of use it throughout the comic book. But it was, it, to me, it always reminded me of like a giant spread. Yeah, I was gonna say this is based on um, Bruegel the Elder's uh, piece. Um, uh, but uh, it's an inter it was an interesting storytelling tool, which was is like you take a big drawing and you show bits and pieces of it throughout the story. I thought it was kind of a cool idea. And it might not even actually have been what they did. I just always thought that it was. So that was like just me projecting what I, I believed was going on. But who knows? All right, so let's see what we got here. Okay, so in the back we have um, some vehicle designs. This is nice. This is actually good stuff. You know, we're not born knowing how to create stuff like this. You may have the ability to draw things like this, but it's like there's, you know, demands that come from actually creating, you know, somewhat believable, believable vehicles. These are like little three months time. My book is slipping now. Great. We've got a small disaster going on. Hold on let's see. These are like little um, an animated things. Nice though. Okay, so I need to get wrapping this up. So, all right, you guys have a great day. I am going to get to work immediately. I'm actually not going to miss a beat today. Um, so I want to get a full page done by tonight. So, it's, I don't know, probably 9 o'clock in the morning right now. But if I could be done by 7, that would be cool. So, all right, you guys have a great day. I love you all. Please smash the like if you can. Share this somewhere. And, uh... I'll be back probably day after tomorrow with another one. Um, we won't do Kaba 2 right away, but I will do Kaba 2 within the next couple of weeks. But I've got all kinds of cool stuff we can look through. Sorry, I'll talk to you later. Bye.